do talk and then you can ask your questions there and please don't do that in the chat on zoom because we then kind of lose uh, maybe some interesting questions that could have been answered and um, on Slido you can also vote for questions that someone else already asked and we will actually try to prioritize these questions uh, with the most likes which is not always possible but we will we will give our best and um, as a matter of fact, I also know that some students from Finland, they have some questions prepared. So feel free to already include them to Slido, because then other students can also vote for your question. So that would be great. And um, we would like to uh, let you know that you should also add your name and the name of your school when you ask a question on Slido, so that we can ask you to come forward at a certain part in discussion and maybe ask your question in person. So that is basically everything there is to say for Slido. Um, for Zoom, we ask you to please turn your cameras on because it's just much nicer to have a person in front of us and not only the black square. And um, yes, we also have a lot of presentations today from students. So that's also, also great that so many students uh, find the topic interesting and want to prepare something. Um, so all the students who have something prepared, please get ready, get yourself some kind of headset or microphone in if that's possible so that we can hear you and um, Yes, we're really excited to hear your presentations. And as far as I'm in, uh, informed, Marie, we already had the first survey prepared. That's uh, true. For, That's for actually Slido, right? exactly the next thing I was going to. Um, so we have the first question for you on Slido. Um, the link should be in the Zoom chat, or you can also access us with technical briefing. So, Philip, if you could maybe share your screen, because we have a mind map for you. So the, the hashtag, we should add that, the, the hashtag is EU yeah, talk. EU talk. Yep. So just hashtag EU talk. Yes, it should be posted already in the chat. Okay, perfect. So Marie, you want me to, to show the screen? Yes, exactly. In which areas is there still a need to catch up in terms of gender equality? If you could show us the mind map and if students are ready, we will give you some time to answer that. So here you can just type in the wordings or the topics that you find really interesting. Oh yeah, okay, that's already good. <laughs> so yes, um, join in everyone in this first survey. We'll get back to it. And um, I think Marie, you want to give the floor now to our three MEPs, right? Yes, exactly. So, um, my question, or my first question to the MEP is actually, and you will have approximately two minutes to answer this, um, what is actually important to you when we speak about gender equality, especially in a world that is more and more interconnected and digitalized, and what do you really want the students to understand from this event today? And um, I think I'll start with Mrs. Pietty Kain. So if you could react to this question, that would be great. I think now it should work now. Yeah, I think you need to yes, switch your mic on. Yeah. yeah. Now. Thank you. Uh, the uh, I have four points, and the first point is that uh, women and other uh, gender preferences are uh, having people having uh, other uh, gender preferences or sexual preferences they are humans and so human rights belongs to all of the people so that's why the women's rights and uh, the lgbtiq rights are human rights and they are universal so it is so important that not even i can't derive the human rights out of myself and say look it doesn't matter i can be discriminated and i'm very happy of being just a woman at home without any education or any income or pension or whatever so it is very essential part of all our whole civilization you and human rights and eu uh, constitutional existence the second point is that uh, uh, we would need to see that the societies are better the more diverse they are because our talent 
our preferences, our knowledge, it's not uh, divided by sex chromosomes. So men are not better, not worse. Women are not better, not worse. And if you exclude half of the society from top positions, just because of your old fashioned attitudes, you lack the talent, the capacity and the possibilities for society to develop, be it the economic development in the businesses, or be it societal development. So it's constitutional right, and it is good for the economy and societal development. Then the third point I would like you to remember is intersectionality, not sexuality, but section, sectionality. And that means that quite often people are saying that, look, well, isn't the disabled people more discriminated? Or what about the refugees? You do not have the luxury to choose, am I discriminated because of my gender, because of my color, because of my ability or disability or whatever is my background. And as you know, Can I just there's stop quite- you? I'm sorry, because we yes. have really, we have yes, so many I'll, things I'll to Yes. Uh, the, um, the, the point is that uh, 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 the, the sex and gender goes along the all the other elements. And so people face discrimination uh, but, and they face multiple discrimination that we should be very sensitive uh, about. Thank you okay, for reminding you. me about the time. Yeah, sure. No worries. <laughs> um, so Mr. Castaldo, I think is among us. So if you could react next. Mr. Castaldo. Ah, yes, I can see a hand rising. You can unmute. Okay, great. Thank you. Now I can. <laughs> yes, perfect. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Hello. Everybody was still uh, uh, blocked. First of all, good morning to everyone. And thank you very much for uh, this uh, lovely opportunity to exchange a bit some remarks and some uh, ideas together with you. Well, first of all, when we are speaking about gender equality, we should remember one very important thing. It's not just about uh, the, the formal defense of equal rights. It's about making that in practice a reality. It's about making uh, in our, within our society rights, responsibilities, and then opportunities of when and, and women and men and then the LGBTI community and girls and boys the same and unfortunately i should say that uh, while we do live in an era in which we uh, we do have uh if we look at our constitutions if we look also at our treaties at the charter of fundamental rights a uh, formal attribution of these rights well we, we're still much far away to have them as rights defended in practice we still do live in societies in which unfortunately there is gender-based violence in which we have to change uh, upon all gender stereotypes. The, and also we are experiencing gaps within the labor market, within all, all the sectors of our economy, even within the way in which we are taking care of our uh, citizens. So how we do, do we tackle that? First of all, my, my point to add and to continue what my dear friend Sirpa was developing, and I'm sure that Mark, of course, will add more uh, more other interesting remarks. We are all members of the LGBTI inter intergroups within the European Parliament. So that we somehow we are all very good friends and we know each other. We are already cooperating a lot in this regard. Well, the first, my first point is education. We need to bring this issue. We need to bring this discussion within uh, the, the um, education system of all our countries because this is something that you have to learn since you are growing up since you are starting your primary school then it, it will become for you natural to see the world in this approach it will become the most important antidote uh, to this kind of rhetorics that you are sometimes experiencing in your family or within your uh, small community this is something that uh, we should try to implement with a very horizontal strategy and approach and, and, and you, you, we know very well that uh, when you are trying to uh, rise this awareness 
and the person is already an adult, it will be much more difficult to eradicate those stereotypes. It will be much more complicated. That's something we're going to talk about, also about stereotypes and how they can have impact uh, also on young people on a later stage. Um, but now let's give the opportunity to Mark to, to, to give some introductory remarks. Of, of course, with, you, with huge pleasure. You can, you can, yeah. Okay, now I can unmute. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to see Sirpa and also Fabio and see all the, the students in the three countries. It's great to be with you. I'm already in the mood of the Conference of the Future of Europe, which means we politicians have to just listen and not talk too much. So th this is a good exercise for me. Gender equality, gender equality is one of the core values of the European Union. And Sirpa said it, human rights are indivisible. And, and therefore women's rights or LGBTI rights are part of the human rights. In the real world, we are not yet there where we want. We are fighting for a union of equality. And in the digital world, this uh, union of equality is even more further away because there is as much discrimination in both worlds and we are fighting this discrimination. Gender, the word gender, when we are in the European Parliament and we have documents and we use the word gender and the important words like intersectionality that Sirpa mentioned, a lot of far-right politicians want to get this out of the text. They think that this is some some crazy uh, gender uh, uh, um, ideology, and uh, there is a whole anti-gender movement. And I just wanted to mention that too. We have to be very careful. This anti-gender movement is very well organized in Europe, in the whole world, financed by American evangel evangelicals and other sources. They are very well uh, uh, organized, and they want to bring us back into a patriarchal society and we have to fight them. And they are active in the real world and they are active in the digital world. So um, when we want more gender equality, we have to be aware that there is a movement against it too, and there is backlashes. I am a gay man. I grew up in the 80s, 90s. I thought in Luxembourg, in the Western Europe, there's not a problem, but I see now how many backlashes there are, how many discrimination, how many violence, there is hate crime, hate speech, and we have to fight against this. And, and, and therefore I think Fabio gave the right word that we start in school, uh, in education very, very early, learning about our differences, but also on what we have in common and uh, bringing up uh, a generation of tolerant Europeans which, which want a union of equality. This is uh, what I hope we can discuss today. And also the digital challenge is even bigger because all the inequalities that exist in the real world exist in the digital world. I give one example, the gender pay gap is 14% in European um, average in the real world, in the in, in digital world, in, in, in ICT jobs, even 19%. So there is Mark, problems and we have to solve them. I you Mark, you're speaking about equality and on your whiteboard uh, behind you, it, uh, it, uh, there's uh, written man of quality and something yes. else. Do not fear and the rest you can't see. Help us to, to read what, what your wi whiteboard says. Man of quality, do not fear equality. This was, I had it the eighth, the, on the 8th of March. This is my, when, when we have uh, International Women's Day, this is what I did this year for the, uh, and I have it here in my office and I thought it would be a good background for, to, for today. Indeed. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So thank you for your intervention and mentioning all these important things such as hate speech too. We, I think we're gonna have a lot of discussion about these things all of you mentioned. Um, if you now could come back maybe to Slido because the students answered the question what they actually think about which areas are actually where gender equality is actually still important. Philip, you mm -hmm. mind, would you mind share what the students? Yes, with, with pleasure. So here we can see our current results and I think most of us have uh, submitted everywhere. So it means there is still a great deal of, of challenges we have to, to tackle. But we can also see, um, as we see on the screen, an intercultural element here. So we see that the Middle East is mentioned. Um, we also find politics, of course, and then there are many different submissions related to work and related to the job market. Okay, Marie, and now I think it's time to give the floor also verbally to, to, this, to, the, exactly. to our pupils. So Elma and Talis, if you're here from the Lenster Lise International School, can you raise your hand or? So that you can switch on your mic. Yes. If you use the raise your hand function on Zoom, 
I think I can see, yeah, I can see you now. Okay. <laughs> oh, hi, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of uh, you, you, noise. Yeah. I think you have too, mi uh, too many mics on at the same time, but the noise is horrible. So I don't see where you will need to use a microphone. I mean, we will get we will get back to you in a second. Thank you, Madam Speaker. All right, then maybe actually we can start with uh, with Kiana from Thiechen, because she actually had a similar topic prepared, or it was more about raising awareness to some topics. So Kiana, if you could maybe intervene, and then Talis and Elma could maybe complete your presentation. Can you raise your hand, Kiana? And Kiana is from the Thiergen, which is a secondary school in Luxembourg City, just for the rest of the audience. In the meantime, Marie, if you allow, I would just like to mention one question on Slido, which is re receiving by far the most votes as well. Oh yeah, So great. it is actually the question, it has received 51 and uh, question number two, only 11. So it's really trending. And the question yeah. is, why is gender equality still a problem in 2021? Okay. And I think this relates very much to the presentation of uh, Mark Angel just now, um, yeah. which actually witnessed that there might be even some counter trends. We have a hand raise. Ah, we see we have a hand raise here. So yeah. I'm not sure if Sylvie Wagner is from the, we are in the Fierschen there listening. Can you confirm by nodding? Well, let's, let's try. Sylvie Wagner, is uh, is this a presentation from the Fiat Schindlichen in Luxembourg City? Yes. Um, yes, uh, I'm oh, hi, yeah. Go ahead. Hi. You have 90 seconds. <laughs> oh, okay. So we will ask to present our Excuse me, uh, could you come closer, maybe just for the presentation? Yeah. So we can hear yeah. you better. Okay, go. <laughs> so we were asked to present our idea, the main question. So um, yeah, we were just thinking about how kind of disappointed we are, how much the um, equality hasn't been achieved yet in the different countries. But then we also asked ourselves, are we even allowed to ask ourselves this question in Luxembourg, as we already have much of the quality, but as I said, still not achieved completely. Um, and then to the main thing is just that how is it even possible that there is an inequality uh, between the different genders and stuff? Um, and we ask ourselves, like, what are we even? to spread so much hate on each other and we would actually be supposed to help each other instead of um, spreading um, this inequality. And um, as you can see, the inequality isn't only in the workspace um, and with the pay cut and stuff for women, but it's also in the private um, whereas women are attacked daily and mistreated and abused um, and not only physically but only but also um, online and stuff um, and in all of this we also have to consider that there aren't only the two genders but also um, multiple genders so we thought um, Due to all of this inequality, are there even any like consequences to um, this abuse um, and to right. the let's take it. Let's take it uh, until uh, here. With, uh, we have to watch the, the time that is that is running, and together with the the question that was perhaps Philip, you can repeat it. That has uh, that is trending on Slido and uh, have our three MEPs reacting to your intervention. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, to this uh, question on, on Slido. Philip, just repeat quickly uh, the question and then um, 
we, we let our MEPs uh, react perhaps in just the opposite order we had before. So uh, Mark Angel, Fabio Castaldo, and Pieta Pietro. Yes, so the trending question was, why is gender equality still a problem in 2021? Which is in the same vein as uh, the presentation we've, we've just heard. Yeah. Mark. Maybe, uh, maybe it's still a problem because we haven't overcome patriarchy yet and, uh, and, and, and we're working on it. And uh, that uh, is for me a, a, a problem and also, um, the other question uh, they, they raise is that there's multiple gender and here gender equality and we fight for this in the European Parliament is too often just translated into other languages, equality between men and women, but it's much more and Sierta explained it and also Fabio, it's, it's, it includes uh, all the different genders and, and how people feel. So um, and maybe, um, maybe it's also because there is all this uh, stereotype there is not enough women in politics. There is not enough women in 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 in, in businesses on, on higher positions on on the boards. The European Union came out with a directive, a women on boards directive, but it's still blocked by the Council. Can you imagine that there is a horizontal anti-discrimination directive which is blocked in the Council uh, for more than twelve years? And 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 and. and We lost Mark. Yes. Okay, we lost, we, we lost Mark. Perhaps we can give him the word again in a few, yeah, few, few yes. moments and carry on with uh, Fabio Castaldo. Yes. Thank you. Thank you once more. But, well, why it is, it, we are still experiencing that, uh, first of all, because unfortunately there are still uh, um, political actors, but in general people that would like to get consensus and more popularity within our society, uh, trying to polarize the divisions within the, within the society, trying to put ourselves the one against the other and not understanding that diversity is a richness. This is not a limit. This is something we should defend and it's not should not be used uh, to say that the, the, the one is that is different than me uh, should uh, somehow be my enemy or should be seen in counterposition comparing with me. Uh, still nowadays, uh, we are, uh, as Mark was saying before, uh, we are listening mm, to people promoting kind of theories that are bringing us back to a couple of centuries. Uh, while on the contrary, what we should try to, to spread and promote is the culture of respect and, and the culture of understanding that our worst enemy still nowadays is the idea that we have to surrender to the status quo. That because of the fact that uh, traditionally uh, it was considered that uh, women should do some specific kind of works, they have to continue to do that, that and they cannot be an excellence, for example, uh, in the, uh, for as an engineer or uh, in, uh, in ICT or in many other sectors in which they have absolutely the same uh, skill to be competitive uh, with men and the same thing also is happening of course in in the top management position still nowadays we have a problem because many business company they think that they have a ma having a manager uh, that, that, that is a man you would not have the risk then of course to uh, take into account that uh, a young woman can become pregnant and can be can stay eventually out for maternity this is something that is really dealing with again the education and the way in which we are approaching the promotion and the defense on this kind of rights this is um uh, I, I still remember that uh some uh, um, einstein a few um, decades ago was reminding that uh, if questions uh, between breaking up an atom or breaking up prejudice he was still thinking that prejudice was much more harder to break up than an, uh, than an atom and okay. i still let's think let's take that let's that take today, that as a final uh, final uh, word and this is ma that must be of course let's say um, our first Jacob. goal all right yeah, uh let's uh, give the floor to uh, mr Pietro Tang. We, uh, i think that there are two major reasons one is that where my uh, colleague, colleagues Fabio and Mark have been referring, we actually have <clears throat> this kind of anti-civilization movement going on and growing all over the world. 
it is a nationalistic, it is paternalistic, it is racist, it is uh, far right, uh, quite often it is fascist in, in some forms and whatever populistic that is. And I think that uh, this is one major threat, but this is another story, but please uh, be aware of that. So it is regrowing of uh, uh, human rights uh, challenges. Then the second is that um, uh, the most of the things are silent discrimination. Uh, so we do not see that. And uh, uh, we think that uh, uh, stereotypingly that things are as they are. I just don't happen to be the uh, uh, director, the boss, the speaker of the parliament. Uh, and I take it as normal, not thinking that there might be this kind of a gendered point of view. The young girl's talents and potential uh, quite often go unnoticed. Quite often trans people are not hired in different positions. Do you have any trans teachers? How many trans friends? or this kind of a mentors do you have? And just to give you an example, what we should do is, and this is very serious, you please try to do the, uh, uh, this kind of an exercise at home and share it with your classmates, where you start and write two columns and think that if you would wake up men being uh, women and women being men one morning, what unequal situations would you uh, uh, see then in your societies? Who drives the buses, takes care of the children, gets higher salaries, leads the armies and nations, stays at home, cleans the toilets, uh, and that is both public uh, and informal sphere. And by that way, we, uh, yeah, that's we can a, that's a great start opening up the- That's a exercise for the students. So yeah, maybe we, you should all do this up afterwards. The, uh, the, oh. the situation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. If it's possible, we would like to retry the presentation of the Lens Dalise. So maybe by now you figured out your sound problem. From, from Luxembourg. Is it working? Thalys and Elma? Yeah. yeah. Hi. <laughs> wow, so much better. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, the so you have 90 yours. seconds as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and afterward, just a second, okay. then we will so have a presentation on, um, on gender based violence from Francesca and Valerio from Manduria. So you can already get ready for the next presentation. Francesca and Valerio. So, Talis no. Elma, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Elma, and my classmate Talis and I would like to talk a little bit about the topic gender inequality. Gender inequality refers to different, unequal, or unfair treatment towards individuals based solely on their gender. Um, gender inequality is caused by socially constructed gender norms and stereotypes. Uh, the issue starts the moment a baby is born when the doctor either announces it's a boy or it's a girl. Um, and although biological sex and gender are completely different, uh, due to stereotyping, they're often seen or treated as the same thing. And around 45% of people say that they experience gender stereotyping in their childhood. This can be really damaging, as up until the age of about five years old, children tend to see gender as something that's fluid. And we would like to mention girls' education. An estimated of 129 million girls worldwide are out of school. Without the privilege of, of a good and fair education, all of you have had the privilege, and I'm sure that you take it for granted every single day. One major thing that keeps girls out of school is, folk is forced marriage. It is seen as a form of violence and entails many violations of girls' and women's rights to physical and mental health. Sexual and reprodu reproductive health, freedom, and autonomy, autonomy, I personally can't even imagine what it must feel like to be a young girl around our age that's a little older without any freedom, rights, or childhood. Gender inequality is also a huge issue for men and people who identify with other ident gender identities. Uh, research shows that people who identify as non-binary were discriminated against in the workplace based on their gender identity and assigned gender at birth. I'm sure many of you can't imagine what that must be like. Uh, development of gender stereotypes in low-income countries was studied and it was found that boys were in many cases more likely to experience physical neglect and often sexual abuse too. 
Um, part of the Global Early Adolescent Study talks about gender straight jackets, and that's the stereotype girl, that boys are strong and aggressive. Thank you so much. Ma you Marie, know. Marie, if it's okay, because I yeah. saw that on the camera and I, I, I found it very interesting. I saw Fab uh, Fabio Castel uh, Castaldo nodding a lot uh, <laughs> during this presentation, especially when when the, when, uh, when you spoke about uh, I mean um, stereotypes for, for men. Can you just quickly explain why you, you've been nodding so, so hardly? No, uh, Uburola was uh, listening to what they were saying about forced marriage, and I'm being the vice president in charge of human rights. Trust me, I had voted and, and drafted so many resolutions, and I was on the ground in many countries in which still, nowadays, the idea of marriage has nothing to do with love between two persons, but has a lot to do uh, between, uh, um, as the idea that this is just a mean to strengthen up ties uh, that could be political, commercial, of interest between families. Uh, then uh, that, of course, is degrading the vision of the person as, as a tool, as an object, and not as a human being that is having and experiencing some feeling. And I do believe that you should do much more in this regard to promote right. uh, the freedom of, of, of for young women to be themselves, to have the right to grow up, to learn, and then to decide freely we, what right. who is the person they would like to, to get married. And these, uh, to, to achieve this goal, let me just finish on this, we have means, because every time we are signing up treaties and commercial agreements with third parties, we are often forgetting that we have clause of conditionality and human rights. And we should start to use those clause and not to be uh, weak with the strong and strong with the weak, if you understand uh, we are sh uh, what I mean. We should get out of double standards yep. and we should not uh, be afraid Point. of putting that on the tables because that's the only way to give voice and to give rights point. to those one who do not have. Okay, Thank you point, so much. Point, point taken. Uh, Marie, um, I yes, think we, we have now a presentation we, it, it, on it's gender based violence. To, to Italy, right? Exactly. And I think it actually suits quite well because, in this sense, we can also speak of forced marriages as a form of violence that happens to young women and girls. So I'm really excited to hear about the gender based violence presentation. Can you raise your hands? on Zoom, use the function so that we can give the word to you. Is that possible? Francesca and Valerio? Is there someone? Yes, with yes. Us? Oh, there's a raised hand, great. There yeah. she is. Hi, Francesca. You can unmute yourself, I think. And Valerio is there too. Are yes. you going to? switch presentations so you you both have together 90 seconds so <laughs> go <laughs> whoever wants to start thank you good morning everyone i am valerio and i talk with my classmate francesca thank you for this opportunity so violence based on gender is a concerning issue around the globe europe has the lowest percentage of violence based on gender in the world but it is a phenomenon not to underestimate. As stated by the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights, 40% of European women avoid hanging out alone, and 37% of women avoid walking in certain areas. But there is something worse. According to this poll, about 35% of the women have experienced physical, psychological, or sexual violence. These numbers are unacceptable in a democratic and free countries like ours. Now, Francesca. Well, can you hear me? It is yep. a pleasure to be right here today, so thank you. As my classmate Valerio said, this data is truly really disconcerting. So as members of the European Union, we need to protect and preserve civil and social rights. Uh, the parliament in um, 2011 uh, voted one of the most important and modern laws in order to contest uh, gender violence, uh, the Convention of Istanbul, first of all. Uh, but we need to do more. Laws are useless if people don't understand the real problem which are the real problems. So uh, it is necessary to introduce gender education in the schools and raise awareness 
So I'm sure that young European generation really wants and deserves a uh, new way to live and uh, see society. And we hope that you will do it. So thank you for the time. Thank you for the presentation. Actually, I have a question to Valerio, if you could raise your hand again, because I was actually interested in the fact that we have many presentation proposals from girls and you were actually one of the only boys. Can you let us maybe know um, why you choose to present something? Hello, Valerio? Yeah, this, your mic is on. No, 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 uh, no. Now again, it's off. Yes, now it should work. Try to add, yes, yes now, now you can. Thank you. Great. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I'm really into this uh, issue because I think that uh, uh, women's rights are human rights. So it's not a matter of women, it's not a matter of men. It's everybody must, uh, must be interested in this issue. Because if women win, also men win, and the other gender. Uh, it's a fight to do together. It's a fight to do everything uh, together, not uh, uh, just men or women. That's it's why a, I choose to uh, be here right now. It's, it's, it's a great point and I, I, we really appreciate it. But how can you explain that if we talk uh, gender questions, in, it's often the case that, well, if you, are, you have an audience, which is mainly uh, constituted of, of women, and also here, we would, uh, as Marie pointed it out, we would see that, you know, most of the, uh, and I'm not obviously not, you know, picking at the uh, women pre presenting, but rather at the men not wanting to intervene uh, for this for this subject. How you as a <clears throat> young man, how can you explain that? Uh, I, I mean, people uh, people from our gender are so reluctant to 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 get involved because it concerns uh, all of us. You said it. Yeah, I think that's uh, cultural issue because a lot of men uh, born live in a um, patriarchal culture so they don't really understand this kind of problem and uh, schools government europe uh, must help and must uh, um, help the situation in order to prevent all the uh, gender violence based uh, uh, for example sexual violence psychological violence physical violence, they must be fight with the um, with education and schools. That's my point. Uh, Marie, what do you think? I think that's a great opportunity to pass the ball back to the MEPs. And uh, I mean, Valerio was talking. Thanks, Valerio, for, uh, Valerio for intervening. That was really great. Um, Thank you. You were, you were talking about the patriarchal environment, and which I find interesting in today's debate is uh, we are in southern Europe, uh, in Italy, we are in central western Europe with Luxembourg, and we are in, in northern uh, Scandinavian Europe with Finland, uh, where we think that uh, Finland is most advanced, which they are in terms of, of numbers and figures, in terms of gender equality. And I'd like to, to, to know from the MEPs, um, how do you perceive the, the society you live in, you are from, like uh, Fabio Castaldo for Italy, Mark Angelsdorf from um, I'm traveling geographically now. For, for Luxembourg, I mean, is in Luxembourg everything perfect? How is the situation in, in Finland? Um, before we then, you know, speak about EU general questions or worldwide, uh, take a worldwide approach even. So Fabio, perhaps first, and then uh, we move up north. Thank you, thank you, Jonathan. Well, in fact, of course, I do really know that my country has a lot, a long way still to do. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we know that there is a strong influence from these, uh, uh, let's say, very extremely conservative, to be kind, <laughs> actors that are trying to uh, defend in this as a tradition of uh, uh, Catholic country. Uh, and uh, just to figure out that there is a poli Italian politician uh, from, Lega, uh, from Lega Nord that say just a few days ago, uh, that in general, uh, they sh we should not encourage in any way uh, young women to enroll in scientific faculties because women are more inclined to be caregivers than scientists. 
This is an Italian senator from extreme right. And I say, I would say, welcome back to the Middle Age uh, when I'm listening to this kind of declaration. But uh, happily, we have also some very positive example we could like, we could try to build on. For example, Samantha Cristoforetti, that is, has been appointed as first European woman in command of the International Space Station. And I think a sample like her, uh, like her example can inspire the younger generation and prove that the, those are just absurd theories that we don't, uh, do not have any relationship with facts. So uh, how the situation, as I told you, still we are seeing a growing episode of violence and what we should try to do in this moment is to push all the European governments uh, disregarding on the geographical zone, it could be Southern or, West, or Eastern Europe or Northern Europe. Well, normally, traditionally, they have less issues in this regard to sign up the, uh, the Council, uh, Council of Europe Convention, the so-called Istanbul Convention, and to implement as soon as possible, because still we have European governments that are not just not ratifying, but some of them, like Poland, would like to withdraw. Some others would like even to say that they do not accept as Hungary at all to ratify. And while on the contrary, the, the, the phenomenon was growing up during the pandemic, we had a lot of cases of domestic violence that were growing up. And the way that we have to do uh, to tackle them is to spread also the culture of um, let understand the people, the person that are suffering of this violence, that they are not alone. Uh, also expanding online support, WhatsApp, telephone support right, system okay, okay. because they have we don't want to be we, we are we, worse we, than the plenary of the European Parliament. After one minute and a half, it's, it's <laughs> gone. Exactly. I really feel in the plenary. I mean, this moment. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. We, we give our best and we try to give the floor also to the students as much as we can. And Maria, so I, I think I saw a student reacting uh, to what Fabio said. Um, give him the floor and then we, we, uh, we continue with Marcus here. But I think it was Lorenzo or. Um, Did someone raise his hand? Yeah, or, I think. Oh, well, some apparently don't have the raise your hand option. So I, well, everyone should actually. It depends perhaps on the browser you're joining. Um, <laughs> but by, 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 but also there's slide. Oh, yeah, I think. Lorenzo, Lorenzo you're, you're, with you're, us, you're, right? Yeah. Yes, I wanted to say that uh, here in Italy we have uh, this problem because the extreme right is the first. Uh, uh, part extreme right are the first parties in uh, Italian Parliament, and this makes uh, gender equality or equality in general more difficult because we still see uh, black people as uh, um, how can I say this? Uh, we still see black people as bad people. Some pe someone in Italy still says that black people as have in their DNA the criminality. This is something acceptable. And same thing with the, um, homosexual. We still say in Italy that homosexuality could be cured with brainwashing. And I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, but this is this is something unacceptable. Is uh, Very More interesting. Than, what this well, do, you have, do you have an idea how that could be changed in Italy? I think the change should be um, a bottom a bottom up one. So we have to to change to start changing ourselves because we are the future. Young people are the future. We have to to be the first in starting the change. The change because we will be in politics next. Um, in the next future, so we have to to start changing our minds because our minds will guide the, the future. Right. Thanks a lot. Th thanks a lot. And uh, I think someone from your class or school just said, well, otherwise I would have asked the question. You are from an, uh, Naples, from Napoli in the south of Italy, and uh, you were talking about the stereotype about. Uh, against homosexual uh, people. I um, remember that there was an Italian prime minister not that long ago who loved, uh, who loved or loved making jokes about uh, homosexual people, and he's now a uh, member of the European Parliament, uh, Silvio Berlusconi, to, to, to name him. Um, 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 Mark Angel, how, how, is the, how is the situation in Latin America? OK. Well, it, 
in Luxembourg, the situation is very, we are the number one when it comes to the gender pay gap. We are very good. We have a very low one. But when it comes to participation in politics, we are not good. Not enough women in government, not enough women in, in parliament, not enough women in, in uh, executive boards on, on leading positions. And uh, this is a pity. But I wanted to react to a few things which were said before. Um, violence, gender violence. I was happy that Francesco came up with it. A man, we need men uh, to be role models and men on the side when women to, to fight for gender equality. This is very important. And um, he mentioned the Istanbul Convention, and it's a scandal that some countries don't want to ratify and block that the European Union ratifies it. And therefore, it's very good that Commissioner Dali, the Commissioner for Gender Equality, uh, will uh, propose a, a directive which is also going in the same direction as the as the, uh, the Istanbul Convention, because the Istanbul Convention saves lives, and that's so important. Then, one, we have to pay attention that we don't fall in the cliché that in the South, people are more conservative or Catholic religion. Just the South from Sicily is Malta. Malta is now country number one what uh, LGBTI rights are concerned. It's very Catholic, uh, and it was very conservative, but there was political courage, and they changed. Uh, Ireland, very Catholic country, they had the referendum, they have a marriage for all. So we shouldn't fall into this cliche of North and South. I think it's political courage. In the North, they were, had the political courage to, to, to do this. And now it's for other countries and, and for the civil society to push their governments, to push their national parliamentarians. We cannot do everything in Europe, in the European Parliament. It's in the national parliaments where things have to move so that the council unblocks all this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, uh, this problems we have, and, and, and therefore we need this, a, a strong civil society which pushes the politicians to open up and to fight for equality. But let's not fall in this cliche north and south, because I said it, south of Sicily is Malta, country number one uh, when it comes to LGBTI rights. Yeah, but I think it's still interesting to know what our local realities are. So yeah. perhaps if there are students also from Luxembourg who want to uh, react to what, to what Mark said, and just give their view on our the situation in our country. Feel free to do so and raise your hand on Zoom. I think I, I was mistaken. I misread something on, on Zoom. Lorenzo is not from, from Naples. Um, I, I misread that. Uh, perhaps you can write it in the Zoom, uh, Lorenzo or someone else from where you are um, so that, that, that I can get that straight. Sorry for that. Um, and Listen, you... I think actually Zia is from Luxembourg, right? O2O? Oh. Is that, that that's Luxembourgish school, isn't it? Um, oh, now you're muted again. Would you like to share with us your experience in Luxembourg? How do you see? Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't really. Uh, Sorry, we have an interference. We in your in your class. I don't know. I think it's you. Oh, it's a, it is an interference in the class. It's fine. It's just, uh, it's, it's, I think your headphone is not connected yet. Yeah. All right. Perhaps we can. Okay. Perhaps um, you can try. I think. Yeah. No, it's better. Yeah. 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 No, it's much better. Um. Well, I wasn't really living. Uh, I wasn't really raised in Luxembourg, but like. Uh, I'm from Iraq, actually, in the Middle East, but uh, since I, I've actually like moved up uh, to Greece, and yeah, um, when I was younger, I, I used to be like uh, shy to play with dolls and stuff uh, like that, because uh, uh, some of my friends or uh, my brother would actually um, make fun of me because of it. Um, yeah, uh, well, for me personally, I liked playing with them, but it's not only that, it's just that uh, because of that problem is that uh, people bully for what you like and stuff like that. And uh, if you had a small child, well, at that age, I was uh, seven, it really is um, a big problem because of the uh, peer pressure, because of uh, other bullying for what you like and stuff like that so generally uh, you would really say that we should keep along the lines of what some other presenters said that we should not hate each other and that creating 
or pr um, promoting gender equality and the peaceful environment has also to to start really in the beginning that we accept each other as individuals and not make fun about each other. Yeah. So that this is yeah, one absolutely. of the the core things to do when promoting gender equality or the acceptance of, of genders in, in general. Yeah, actually, um, just uh, to give uh, more freedom to like younger people, let's say if they like to play with dolls or uh, play with cars and stuff like that, you can just let them do what they want. Yeah. Actually, that's uh, yeah, uh, that's all. That's a really good point. Thank you. Can we may have another interaction from Luxembourg, or do we want to give the word to Silpa, Kitty, and Jonathan? I absolutely can wait if we see a raising hand, and I can get my back oh, uh, straight from uh, Lorenzo. Thanks for for reacting on on Zoom. So Lorenzo is from Manduria, a, a town in, in southern it uh, southern Italy, a province of Apulia. So at least I got the. Uh, uh, <laughs> The direction right it was it was in the south italy so we have a right uh, a raised hand in raised hand yeah from mark angel <laughs> who wants uh, to react Marie and jonathan could we also um soon have a look at slido again yes but we we also need to hear Sierpa also very soon again Sierpa, please be kind and so uh mark uh you are because of the problem with the connection you have less speaking time than the other staff so you can just quickly react with two or three sentences and then we pass on the floor to yeah, but I, I was just going to react to the fact that we should let uh, a boy play with dolls or a girl play with whatever he wants, and, and it doesn't even mean that he will later be uh, a lesbian or he will later be gay. It has nothing to do. Or it's very important that schools and parents work together because I'm now talking about trans children, which I have been working a lot with, and uh, it's, I have, we have some projects in Luxembourg. Where in, in elementary school, the, the, the children, they change the names, the, the, the teachers, everybody participates, and this goes very natural. I think we have to do these things very naturally. Then people uh, grow up. It's the same with disabled students. When I was in school, we never saw disabled children. They were, they were, they were hidden in other schools. Now they're in the schools. We, we, we know that they're not different from us, that they, we are all the same. And I think we should. The school has a very important role to play, but they let the children and the young people be themselves. And I'm as a gay man, I always say, I hope that one day homosexuals don't have to come out because I don't know any heterosexual who came to his parents or his teachers and say, listen, I have to tell you something, I'm heterosexual. If we reach that stage, we are, we are, we are on the winning side. Thank you. Yeah, but Peter Kainan, how is the situation? It is better, of course, than it is in Iraq or it is in most of the African countries or in some cases in Italy. Uh, so maybe we could uh, work uh, better together like we do in the European Parliament. But I would like to warn about the self-righteousness that I quite often see in the Nordic countries, where we start sort of a regressory of one point to the others. Yes, but look Pakistan. Yes, but look uh, Middle East. Yes, but look the Italian. We are okay and everything is perfect and women are equal and we do not have discrimination, gender based discrimination. And this is not true. If we are the best of the world, it would mean that we are good and far away from perfect. So it is very important to see. That we still have the majority of the tribute code. And last but not uh, least, the point about this violence is that we need to see that the violence is physical, but it is also mental, like in the play, uh, case whether you want to play with a dog or not, whether you need to play supportive and encouraging, and there's a zero tolerance about violence and discrimination in, in this kind of a mental side. Or it can be social, it is the structures why women can't do this or that, or the men or the boys or can't do this, can't be Catholic priests or whatever might be the case. And we need to fight all these forms and uh, uh, support the structural change. All of our systems, like Mark said, there's a lot to go and we need to make the change happen. I see these 
from Ireland and the Scottish Republic. And then again, I'm not going to read it. I do not claim to be a stereotype. There are a lot of big quality, big quality writers in Italy, like Fabio and Francesco lots of them in Iraq, lots of them in Algeria uh, or Afghanistan. There are lots of good people all over. It's not them first. Actually, you mentioned the scarcity of horse, that leads us to our most, or for the question with the most high title right here. We have a short exchange about the topic, where we go a bit more into the details about the effects of the digital age on gender equality. Thank you, Mr. Rex. I mean, could I quickly show the screen? Yeah, sure, yeah. Thank you. So the question with the most like, I don't know, it's just pain. Interesting. So we will still keep with the, with the second one. Um, how can we fight against the lack of authority many women have around the world over their bodies, for example, access to contraception or abortion? I think it's actually an interesting topic because we were also speaking about how it is actually not fruitful to compare us with the rest of the world because still in Europe, there's a lot of um, gender inequality as well. So who wants to react? Okay, we'll start from the with Pierpa. I think I can because then we can go in the other direction. Yeah, I would just take Pierpa for, for this one and yes. move on with another slide or question. Can you reshow the question and I'll start answering? So the question was, how can we fight against the lack of authority many women have on the world over their body, for example, access? Contraception or abortion? Yes, thank you. Well, I'm a great uh, believer for support groups from here. We have women's uh, organizations, children's organizations, youth organizations, equality, Red Cross. And uh, I think it would be very important for all of those to have the clinic, to have the education, to have the contact, and where possible to have the personal mentoring. Support for girls on, of course, uh, on uh, contraception advice, but in the case the abortion would come up to, to consult to help and try to them to, to state abortion because uh, uh, people do have, women do have a right over their body, whatever the religion or legislation says in some countries, and then that kind of a person should not be left alone. You should always find someone to support and help you and to, to guide you to, to um, if needed, in another member state to a safe and, and legal abortion, not to have uh, complication, uh, compli physical or mental complications. And yes, do not be blamed and do not be feel guilty about uh, that because that is the guiltifying that quite often uh, goes in hand, uh, in hand with that. It is your personal choice and your personal feelings, uh, feelings, and it is your personal right. Thank you. So now um, we have another question on Slido. Philip, would you mind sharing again? We have a question that I think is yes, actually please. interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. I think it's the first one, right? Why does gender equality seem to be a concern for men? Question asked from Chiara Portaccio. Chiara, are you here? Are you, are, you, are you here in the Zoom? So perhaps you can react to the, the response um, that we would get from. Uh, let, I, I would propose to, to pass it on to Fabio Castaldo. This one, um, Chiara, are you here in Zoom? Perhaps in the meantime, Fabio can already give a response to this one. Yes, What's wrong you. with us, Fabio? Why thank are you, we Jordan. not concerned enough? 
I think we are not concerned enough, first of all, because we do not feel that the, our rights are undermined and are touched. So uh, unfortunately, still, again, and come back to education, we should understand that any violation of fundamental rights of every human being is a problem, not just for that human being, but for all the rest of the community, for all the rest of us. And uh, unfortunately, I, I, I truly believe that uh, many men, they say, this is not my issue, so I do not feel concerned. Uh, it's up to the women to fight for their rights. It's up for the LGBTI community to fight uh, for their rights. I'm absolutely, on the contrary, very happy and proud to be uh, a young heterosexual man fighting and standing within the LGBTI intergroup of the European Parliament, because I truly believe that until all the rights of, of the European citizen will be at firm in reality. Also, my right, my uh, fact to be an, a European citizen will be uh, undermined and will be attacked. So again, I come back to education. I come back again also to the responsibility of the families because this is not should this, that should not be just education within the school, but should be also education at home. And that means also that we have to try to kill all the stereotypes we are still seeing in the television, in the media in newspapers it's a very long way and, and we need a, a strong strategy in this regard but then and just with this mean we will have the men totally on board and uh, we uh, we have a lot of stereotypes also online and that's I mean, just also, to come back to the uh, uh, topic after the, uh, today's debate uh, gender equality in the digital es age uh, especially Marie, online I would say. Yeah, yeah. Marie, build, yeah, that is the build question the bridge. we will try to answer yeah. in the in the next uh, in the next hour actually. Um, so we talked already a lot about stereotypes, and you already mentioned it again. So maybe um, breaching gender equality is also smashing these stereotypes. And we have uh, also one presentation on this specific topic, which could really greatly lead us to how these stereotypes might be reproduced online. And we have this presentation from Gaia Rizzi from Milano. So if you're here, that would be great because yes, I can, yay, I can see you. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, Gaia, thanks for being here. So you have 90 seconds now to give us all the stereotypes that we want to smash actually. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, firstly, I wanted to thank all the participants to be here today. And I also wanted to say that my classmates and I are grateful for the opportunity to join to these meetings thanks to the EPAS project. So thank you so much. Uh, we discussed a lot in class about equality and gender gap, which are themes that we feel very close to, also because we are in our all girl class. So. We realize that in a very near future, we are going to be catapulted in the labor market. And moreover, we live in the 21st century in which technology has become so powerful yet fundamental in our everyday lives. But as we all know, it also widened discriminations between genders. In fact, lots of women felt execu executed because uh, we weren't considered suitable for the digital challenge. So uh, now, as we know that the European Parliament supports our rights, we are, of course, sure of our potential and uh, all the um, all the um, capacities that we have and that we are sure that we will be represented in the Parliament and we will we'll be um, represented in our future career. But as uh, you are a member of the European Parliament, uh, uh, we would like to ask you, how can we react if we are victims of discrimination? And as young women, how can we make the difference in, in this kind of... Who wants topic? to react? To Gaia, Perhaps thank I, you for I, the presentation. We, and we will Mark get Anna, back to maybe. you for another question, Gaia. Just stay tuned. Uh, Mark, Mark uh, perhaps you can react. Yeah. Unmute. Okay. I, um, the European Parliament, we haven't talk, talked about it, and, and uh, came with a, rep a fantastic report from the Committee on Women's Rights and Gender Equality, and it's called Closing the Digital Gender Gap, Women's Participation in the Economy. And if you read that report, uh, there is a lot of incentives which we give. Europe cannot legislate in all the, the sectors. Some competences are in member states, so education especially. So we can give a lot of recommendations. 
uh, as far as uh, education is concerned. Uh, but in other fields, uh, equality at work, there we have a directive. We can, we can, we can take care. For example, there is a directive now on pay transparency, which Commissioner Dali just uh, uh, brought to the Parliament, and I'm lucky to be the shadow rapporteur on that. And this is where we want transparency, so that uh, people can see in a company, uh, women can see if they earn the same for this equal equal work for equal value. So these are steps where we can, as European Parliament, interfere and legislate, but on other issues, we can only give in, uh, incentives. And in this report, it, it's a gold mine. I uh, discovered it yesterday. Unfortunately, I'm not on the FEM committee because there's too many people wanted to be on that committee, which is which is good. Sirpa is a member of yeah, that Yeah, Sirpa is on a member, uh, yeah. member of the FEM committee. And uh, this, is, this is good that- add remarks. Yeah, yeah. And, and so maybe Sirpa can go on. But, yeah. uh, and this just document to, is a gold mine. Just to break down this technical EU vocabulary, shadow rapporteur means that you are in charge of your political group uh, to work on this legis uh, legislation. Uh, see, by you as a member of the FAM committee, perhaps you can complete um, Mark's point. And Gaia, as I said, we'll come back to you soon. Well, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to, to back to Gaia's point, but first about Mark's point. <clears throat> yes, I'm working there uh, as uh, responsible for my political party, the Shadow Rapporteur, about the gender equality pay. But then uh, coming what you can react if you are faced with that kind of a negative uh, reactions, I would have fivefold advice. First, react always. If it is against you, said, uh, inform it uh, to, to Twitter, to, to uh, TikTok, to, to Facebook, wherever you are. And even though they say your claims are not right, inform it anyway. We are fighting uh, to have a legislation in the FEM committee on this digitalization to include all types of the hate speech uh, uh, that is gendered in, uh, included and to be erased. Then react if your friend is uh, 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 ridiculed or, or uh, targeted with the hate speech. You wouldn't let your friend to be beaten in the street either. Don't let her or him be straight and beaten in the social media. React on everybody that is beaten because this is what we, you would do. And inform all these cases to the platform owner because we need to have millions of uh, uh, information going day and uh, to the words then, them and saying, this is not right, full stop. Write about this to your politicians on member state and on the European Parliament and ask them to act upon. And last but not least, remember it's not only hate speech when it says I hate you because you are women or uh, you are trans or naming and shaming. It is also the effect when girls are ridiculed because of their opinion, or opinion their outlooks or they are too pretty, too fat too fashionable, too funny with their hair or whatever that might be, uh, or their opinions are just uh, 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 attacked tenfold what the male colleagues are. And this is, and Fabio Bob probably knows this, what happens in politics. Probably you get hate speech, but less than what the young green or left uh, female uh, uh, MEP I'm a bit safeguard uh, on this, but uh, coming, uh, but I get it too. But especially if you are a young woman in sort of a left or green, you really get passed. And we would need to defend this uh, uh, right for opinion and discussion in all levels, be it a child, young politician, or an uh, what adult do you or think an about now that you're talking about more the political environment? Um, I think that's a fair point, of course, that we have a kind of representation also um, in the political world. But how about actually the workforce or the workplace where um, you said the term that women sometimes they get seen as too pretty or too fashionable? Is that maybe also an argument um, for some people to say, yes, a woman, especially in ICT jobs, so in information, um, communication and technologies, for example, 
where there is an extreme misrepresentation, uh, misrepresentation of women in the workforce. Is that maybe also a reason for um, that that people that women think that they don't belong in this world, although it is actually the the workforce of the future with shaping the way we will live in the future. So do you think yes, this has, this, how do we bring women into these jobs actually and bring them to shape the world you live in? Uh, role models uh, from ICT that are women, firstly. Secondly, teach ICT differently. It is very male dominant view of robots and technologies and then you just force women to do or girls to do that you would need to change the education so that it has the interest areas of girls too and so you need a lot of more female teachers to uh, to engage uh, engage there let's Thank see you. let's let, let's see uh, among among our audience do we have any any woman wanting to study mathematics sci um, um, it really this ict uh, uh, businesses um if this is the case in any uh, classroom or in, on any connected advice if you have such a person sitting behind it uh, raise the hand on zoom we'd love to hear from you well we we hope that we will get a raising hand perhaps uh, if not, Marie, maybe you know about someone or you know about someone maybe have a really yeah Some, if you, do you know an inspiring role, role model, let's say, female on this, uh, in this domain we're talking about? Because if we talk about stopping stereotypes, we also need to maybe go forward ourselves and not just only talk about it, but maybe choose a job that is maybe not really woman-like or man-like or whatever that might mean. Let's, so maybe if you have something really let, something special you want to work later or study, Let's have, oh, yeah. okay, let's have, we have one intervention. Is it yeah. Gaia? No, it's uh, Gaia too. Okay. Yeah, Gaia okay, too, but raise the hand Gaia. on, on yeah. Zoom, you can, because then we see it, it's yeah. because I have you on the screen. Okay. Like, okay. Gaia, Gaia first, and then we go to the uh, Learn Studies in Luxembourg. Okay, um, I actually uh, wanted to study law, but uh, I want to do international law. So I wanted to enter in the European Parliament or work for the uh, international organization, for example, UNESCO and so on. Yeah, so I think it would be a very difficult adventure, but I will achieve that some way, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, pretty sure about that. <laughs> Thank you. We so, okay, we go to Elma and uh, Talis. But I think you're you're muted. Now you can maybe talk. Or maybe we go to we go first to Filippa. Can you maybe turn your camera on? Is that is that possible? Yeah. Hello, Filippa. Yeah. Filippa, can you hear us? The camera doesn't work. Okay. Okay, then that's all right. Then maybe let's just have the radio radio mode. Uh, where are you where are you from, Philippa? Um, at the, at the moment it's uh, Siska that is talking. We are sharing the same. Ah. Ah. Okay. And and and, and you are, are, are from you, where are you Luxembourg. from? Luxembourg. From okay. Luxembourg. Okay. Go ahead. Um. So I want just to say that my sister at the moment is studying uh, mathematics. And uh, she's also doing a master, maybe thinking about doing a doctor in it, and wants uh, afterwards to get uh, need to be a teacher in mathematics. Is she facing some difficulties or some prejudice too? Someone saying, "Yeah, that is not something for you," or is uh, she quite no, accepted where the, she is? What's her experience? At the moment, she's having a good experience. Uh, she notices that uh, more more men than women that are studying mathematics. Yeah. But uh, she has a good environment, so she got luck with her environment, actually. Okay. Did she always want to study math mathematics? Or uh, was no, that... At the beginning, she wanted to study philosoph philosophy, but oh, then okay, changed her mind to mathematics. Very interesting change Thank of topic. Thank you for your intervention. Thanks for this insight. And then we have the Linz Balise again. Um, we'll try. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I have like an interest in like sciences and like computers things and like 
yeah I don't really know, know what to say but like yeah okay so you want to become a hacker or a software developer no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no like somewhere like software like my dad does it and that just kind of interests me as well like I've been like like sciences or like computering that's like always interested me like my entire life and stuff like that do you have classes in Luxembourg in computer science or in programming and all these things yeah Is that that's great yeah uh, yeah we have ICT uh two like two lessons every two weeks it's not a lot but yeah we had it okay that's good uh, perhaps you can just stay j stay yeah. with us a second um, to, um yes. we'd like to because we were we were speaking about role models and uh, I mean what is very big online uh, and who are also role models we can say is are the influencers are there uh, yeah. influencers you, you follow on, on, on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok? Uh, Actually, Jonathan, I want to give that question to everyone in yeah, uh, yeah. the debate That's, because yeah. Philip has the poll already ongoing for the influencers. Right. So okay. if you want to go to Zoom, you can. Okay. Right, Perhaps can we can let, in. we can let, I mean. The, 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 we already have results. All right, okay. Yeah. So maybe, maybe let's take a quick look. Yeah, now it's coming more people. Okay, someone from. But there are a lot of stars to... there, so yeah. you really follow. Who is Roberta Prete? I mean, I'm sure the people from Italy will, will be able to explain that to us. Greta Thunberg, we know. Rihanna. Billie so Eilish. A lot of stars, actually. Yeah. Who is Roberta Prete? Can someone, Billie Eilish, uh, again, uh, can someone from Italy explain to us who Roberta Prete is? I suppose it's someone from Italy. Maybe it's yeah, I don't know. But is it maybe maybe you can ask a question generally to the audience? Is it also that in the society the society changes and the stars, like singers or actors, uh, like Billie Eilish? I think she's a she's a she's something really important, especially for younger people. So is this actually something that brings forward gender equality because these people are yeah. like role models to you? Uh, Does someone wants to react can, to that? Uh, Marie, sorry for that. We can keep uh, put this question on standby and pick it up uh, later. I know that uh, Fabio Castaldo, Castaldo has to leave us in five oh, okay. minutes. So Fabio, um, we can give you uh, the floor perhaps for you to recap on what we've heard or what you've heard so far and uh, before the others, you can give, share with us the conclusion you you take away from this from this debate before you leave us. Thank, thank you very much, Jonathan. First of all, I would like to express my best wishes to to Gaia because I was feeling how much she do believe in her future, and I I, I want to tell her you are warmly welcome here in the European Parliament whenever you want. We are waiting for you to let you start to taste what is the feeling of, of working here. Uh, going ahead, I wanted to uh, say to a bit further develop, uh, to develop what uh, Sirpa was doing before when she said that if, unfortunately, yes, it is not easy also to do a, a young politician and not just a young woman politician, a young politician in general. I also have to say that in, especially in my first term when I was just freshly elected, I was experiencing sometimes some attempt to bully me just because I was young and I was then supposed to be totally uh, inexperienced to express a judgment or uh, the, I was not eventually to consider to be appointed uh, uh, for an important role as a, as a rapporteur, not even to say as vice president, I had to, to fight very hard to make my way uh, uh, through the European Parliament and to convince all the colleagues of different sensibilities, even very different than mine, that I, I could have fulfilled this role. And I, I, I do truly believe that the only way to do that is a hard work, is commitment, is showing day by day that you can make the difference with your passion, with your will to study, with the, your commitment in, in the parliamentary work as in any other activity. Well, I truly consider this debate extremely interesting because I saw that all our young friend that was taking the floor were extremely aware of this difficulty of the situation, but also full of 
good remarks and full of uh, good uh, answers, not just to uh, difficult questions to us. And uh, as it was said, in general, we have to continue to promote a culture of education and a culture of inclusion also through the digital means that we were seeing before. Why? Because in the, through the digital means, uh, through the digitalization, many person feel that they are um, feeling that they are uh, deresponsabilized somehow because uh, so, they are expressing sometimes some remarks and very bad remarks that they would never say in person to another person in front of them. But because of the fact that this is virtual, they think that this is does not have the same negative value. And this is something that we should absolutely understand that it's not true. They are, we have still young people sometimes committing suicide for the way in which they were shaped, named and shamed to the digital means. That's something that they should understand. It is, it is exactly the same thing. It's not because you are, you are using, on, are you seeing that on Facebook or I Twitter mean, or in Instagram? Can I, can I ask you one final question? Uh, it's linked to your political party. It's something I'm really curious about. Please. You are from the Movimento Cinque Stelle in Italy. And yes. what was very special or is special about your party that uh, the participants participative part is very important about it, being physically and being virtually. And I wonder, um, in terms of this participate, uh, participation aspect, um, to what extent were fe if, uh, did you have a female participation? Was it really equal between men and women? Or uh, how, how was that? Could you perhaps share that as a like final word? I'm extremely happy to say that in both the terms, the first one and the second one, in which we have been elected in the, in the Italian parliament, we have even a higher number of uh, um, MPs and senators, female MPs and senators elected. Why? Because we said that we wanted the money out of politics and we were just voting online our candidacies um, according to the CV. And that means that, uh, of course, uh, gender equality sometimes is just a matter also of means. And, you have and, to. Uh, but okay, I mean that's great. I mean, in terms of MPs, but uh, what about the, the, the? I mean, the creation of the program of your party, and, and I mean that this was like. I, I know that participation from from activists is very important to you. Yes. Um, so. Um, what that that was really my my point. Uh, to what extent did you have like an equal gender? Uh, representation in this, this participation, especially virtually? The same as, as, as it was for the elected person, even in terms of participation, it's a bit higher uh, for uh, our female activists. And I truly believe that this is also because, as I was saying, uh, this is not about Bonnie or this is not about uh, just the free time you can have, but when you are using technology for the right purposes, you are breaking up some walls and you are really open the possibility also for uh, a very committed uh, um, woman in, in, in his career uh, to make a contribution. And that's what I experienced to, together with, with my colleagues. So I really do believe that uh, technology is, is an, a, an extremely powerful tool and digital of course it is as well if you are but this is like a mystery for a surgeon if you are using that in a proper way you can save life and you can strengthen in our case participation and occasion of, of discussion and enrichment but of uh, of course if you're not controlling that if you're not putting clear rules then it can became also an, a negative tool and as with a, with, with a beast story also, you can kill one person if it's not in, in the proper hands. That's why I warn everybody to, to continue to believe in participative democracies, that, that it's, it's a, a, a fundamental component also to revitalize uh, um, okay. our representative democracy. The two things are not in contradiction. They must be built together and strengthened together. But of course, every time, let's promote the good models and way and rules to use that to, to prevent any possible um, denial of, uh, right. of, of human rights. So Fa that's Fabio my Cast personal experience. Okay, Fabio Castaldo, grazie mille per essere Prego. con noi. It was, a, it was a my pleasure. pleasure. A pleasure. Um, I hope that uh, we will see again uh, soon for another exchange like that. We uh, appreciate it a lot. And, Whenever uh, you want, and I will leave you in very good hands with Sirpa and Mark, my very good friends, that we will continue to see you. Bye-bye.
Grazie mille, alla bye prossima. Bye. And uh, Marie, uh, I think um, yeah, actually, uh, Fabio built a good to... bridge talking about yeah. the situation of the, exactly. inter, uh, the conditions the internet can, can offer. Go ahead. Actually, it's um, on the basis of what uh, Mr. Catal Castaldo said. So um, when we speak about uh, rules online or how to um, act or uh, intervene with each other, um, I was actually wondering, um, Mark Angel, do you think that the internet uh, offer a different experiences uh, depending on which gender you belong to? Maybe also if you're LGBTQI, is that is the digital age or the digitalization in this sense actually helping us or is it actually uh, more a threat? I think digitalization, uh, if, you, if it's used properly, is a really chance. For example, for trans and intersex people, they thought they were alone in the world. They, 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 they got, they got together. They, they, they created a lobby, and, and in this sense, internet can be very good. But on the other hand, we, we talked about the whole uh, digital, uh, digital um, uh, mobbing and, and 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 violence, hate crime, and hate speech on the digital. So that's that's a from that perspective, it is a, a problem. If you allow, I wanted to come back to what was said before. Um, in this whole subject we're debating, I think we have two challenges. The first one is to get more girls and women into, into uh, ICT studies. For the moment, it's only uh, out of the 1.3 million students in Europe, there's only uh, ICT students, sorry, there's only 17% of girls and women. This has to change because otherwise artificial intelligence coding will be bias. If it's just done by men, uh, there will be conscious or unconscious uh, 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 gender discriminatory bias in these algorithms. So that's one important thing. That's adding but, up to the already existing yes. uh, gender data gap, yeah. right? And, but you can, on the other hand, participate in the digital economy without having studied ICT or without being an engineer or because you can be a, a female uh, leader of a startup entrepreneurship. And here we have to, uh, the commission and also the member states, they have to foster women's entrepreneurship, support women who are startup leaders. So they can participate in this digital economy without being a geek or without being, you know, without being an expert on, on, on technology. Uh, and, and I think um, we should not forget that aspect too. But both are important to my, to my understanding. Okay, and I know that we have a, a school from Napoli uh, who wants desperately to take a floor. Uh, perhaps you can raise a hand on, on Zoom, so not physically, but click the right button uh, so that we can uh, switch on your mic and uh, so that you can add uh, your contribution to, to this debate. I actually think that it's they cannot intervene because they cannot raise their hand. I think, right? Can that be? Oh, is it? I see Lichio or John. They are and, unmuted um, now. They can speak. Okay. Now they can speak. Great. Go ahead. Vi ascoltiamo. No. Oh, the sound quality is pretty bad. Yeah, try again. Liceo Giordano Bruno. Okay, the, the connection is really, really, really. Yes. Okay, okay. again, again. Okay, you will love it. Now you're, un you're muted again. The mic's off. Switch it on again, please. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear us? Yes, perfectly now. Go ahead. Dai, vi ascoltiamo. Can we hear? Can you hear us now? Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. A current issue inside you. Okay. One aspect of such discrimination concerns women. The gender gap in the world of work still persists in many countries. According to recent estimates, women are still a long way from achieving gender equality in the world of work. They are employed in low-skilled jobs and are paid less than men. In the European Union, the gender pay gap is calculated on the basis of the differences in gross hourly wage between working men and work working women. In our country, the gap is 5%, far below the European average. 
but there is still a little to celebrate. The data, in fact, does not take into account other determinating factors that characterize our labor markets, such as the lower female employment rate, the different professional qualifications and specificities of the public and private sector. The figure of female employment in Italy is very diversified between North and South, where the percentage of working women is around 30%, while in Sweden, per, uh, for example, the employment rate for women reaches the 81.2%. All these inconvenience are due to cultural factors. Usually, a woman is supposed to achieve her goals simply by delivering and raising uh, children. And a new role is hardly accepted in our society, especially by older generations. There are a lot of common places to be told what we hear the most is women are less because they work less skilled and therefore lower paid. Often, women work for a time, which is why they earn less. Men study more, which is why they have higher paid jobs. Paradoxically, the more the number of the graduated women rises, the less women who apply for a job manage to begin to work. There are also other elements that further distance workers from workers. First, women usually do more hours of unpaid work than men and are forced to take long periods of work to take care of their children. The European Union is trying to solve the problem by implementing different strategies. Ultimately, it has adopted the work-life balance directive with the aim of encouraging a fair distribution of parental leave between men and women and the full to favor female participation in the labor market. Women also experience a difference in retirement income. In 2017 in Italy, more than 5 million women received a pension with an average annual amount of about 17,000 euros. For the nearly 6 million male pensioners, the average amount was almost 24,000 euros. Gender equality as in the workplace, a profound effect on the development of societies and equality of rights. It also means equality of duties is an ideal that everyone is supposed to struggle for. No teams, no parties, no competition. It's a problem that concerns all as all well and that will automatically improve our whole society. Thank you, Thank Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you for one, many one question. One question to you too, and then to the others. What are your, we had it behind in the bubble before on, on Slido, what are your role models that inspire you, influencers or whoever you want to take? Can we have a um, very quick look at the results we have now? I, I just like to, the two guys from uh, Napoli reacting and then we can. Okay, uh, my role model is actually my cousins. Um, she has a blog on Instagram and she talks about feminism and uh, gender equality. And, but if you have to talk about influencers, um, in Italy, I'm sure that there are, but I actually don't follow a lot of them. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, they, maybe in Italy, yeah, there are a lot of influencers that talk about it, but I don't know if I really follow one. Maybe also Chiara Ferrani. Yeah, she talks Chiara about other international influencers who deal with yeah. the topics maybe of feminism. Yeah, Chiara Ferrani is uh, Fedez. And yeah, yeah they talk Chiara about. Chiara Ferrani and Fedez, yeah. they talk about gender equality. And last month, I think, they uh, talked in television uh, about uh, Didier Zan, that's uh, a new um, a proposal. Uh, low proposal that uh, goes uh, against homophobia and transphobia and he had the courage to talk about uh, that issue in television and yeah if I have to think about a role model yeah. I would say Fadis. Yeah I definitely agree with it. Grazie a voi. <laughs> Grazie <Bravo>. a voi. <laughs> Philip let's go to Slido. Yes so this is indeed also the person who is leading in our poll Chiara Ferrani uh, we see Ariana Grande, we see Billie Eilish, Greta Thunberg. Papa Francesco. Yes. That's really interesting. Does so someone yeah. wants to react, maybe? Someone yeah. who... who... Is this person on Zoom who wrote Papa Francesco? It would always be interesting to get to know their role they play uh, yeah. with regard to gender equality. It would also be great to have a female Pope one day. Is the person who wrote Papa Francesco part of our Zoom conversation or is he or she listening on, 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 on YouTube or Facebook? I didn't know he had a YouTube channel. If your no. digital hand does not work, you can also just use the physical hand and we will yeah. see you. Well.
No one. Okay. Um, Marie, should we let Marie, uh, Mark and Sierra react to what we've heard so far? Yes, absolutely. The last Oh, maybe maybe we can ask sounds... more generally just about the influences, not only about Papa Francesco, yeah, uh, but also can... Francesco. Yeah, sorry, that that'd be good. And uh, perhaps just to to give you an, uh, to share an idea that we've had is like, I mean, do you know like any male makeup uh, influencer? I mean, I mean, I just know, I mean, that there are female uh, influencers on on makeup, so there. Isn't there like a, a, a risk that these influencers strengthen these stereotypes um, that, that they are? I mean, I don't know that many male beauty experts, to be honest. That's actually I, an interesting question also not for the students, but for the MEPs, right? Yeah. If the MEP, if the influencers are, or influencing online is actually promoting stereotypes instead of um, crushing them up. Okay, let's say ladies first, Sierpa, and then Mark. Thank you. <clears throat> I would continue to say that's a good question. And it seems to me that they quite often, they uh, this is this kind of a hidden uh, discrimination. They amplify the stereotypes. And I was just uh, trying to think very hard. Do I, do I know any makeup artists uh, uh, that are male? or influencers. Yes, I do quite actually. He's in his 70s. Uh, he was called a most monsieur. He was a Finnish and a famous gay who, who sort of a, make the makeup for all those sort of a fancy ladies ages ago. But this is a stereotyping picture also that they, it is a gay person. And then I do know some other gay persons and, and this kind of a uh transgender people that are very good on this and uh, in, in publicity but that actually sort of fortifies the picture to be a male in this sector you would need to be trans or transvestite or, or whatever at least drag queen or uh, uh gay and no this is not what we would like to do and i was thinking a lot of people who i would sort of put as this kind of a a role model to me, but none of them actually are influencers. None of them are high in publicity, uh, European wide or, or in, in Finland. And that tells what kind of a sort of a people, so the social media and the media picks. And then, you know, our friends speak and I follow quite a lot of these people too, uh, but it's harder to find the other type of the people and start following and maybe we should be making this kind of a sort of a social media waves of different like kind of thinkers and actors and looking like like different people too because quite often this keeps very limited and horribly traditional old version picture especially for women how they should look like and how they should act like and uh, what is good and bad and I love cooking and uh, I like to do my hair and well this is the latest garment and you know and, and all that and not that so much that wow why didn't anyone invent a good uh, application to uh, to solve this or that my problem. Oh, so that that indeed is is I think that very yeah. uh, aware yes. and acute point. Thank you. Let, let, th uh, thanks, uh, Sierpa. Let's pass this point also to 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 Mark Angel. Um, I mean, what I what I like to hear uh, was uh, from Sierpa indeed was this aspect of in, uh, that we need to reverse some kind of stereotypes. And what is interesting is, is I mean, as far as I'm if I'm well informed, the two presidents of the LGBT. IQ uh, intergroup are, are homosexual. It's, I mean, it's you and, and Terry Reinke, but Fabio Castaldo, who, who has left us, he is heterosexual. And I think. I'm a hetero. Uh, uh, sorry, excuse me? <laughs> I'm good old fashioned heterosexual. <laughs> but you also, you're also, right. Thanks. Thanks. For that. You're, also part of, you're also part of the, of the intergroup. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I used to be the vice chair eight okay. years ago, but I. Sorry. Left, I, uh, 
I uh, was serving so long time that I wanted to give a bit of room for others, but I'm still a very active member. Thanks. And I have a bit the same point that the Castaldo don't uh, leave the fight only for the people who desperately need it. Thanks for, thanks for putting that, that straight. I, I, indeed, I didn't know that you were also vice president uh, some time ago. So sorry about that. Um, so Mark, um, just like another remark and just to, to, to have like a further perspective. I mean, there are jobs also like in government. I mean, most, most times, I don't know how it's in Finland, to be honest, uh, um, family ministers are often uh, women and interior um, ministers for interior affairs are often male. Uh, so there, there are also this, this stereotypes that are reproduced in certain uh, governmental jobs as well. So um, perhaps you can react to, to what, what Sierpa said and uh, the previous before. Okay. I always had a dream when um, I always wanted to be the first male minister for equal rights in, in my country. It didn't happen. And, and I, I realized another dream, becoming an MEP, and I'm also very happy there. And I work a lot on, on, on gender issues uh, there, on, on equality between men and women and gender equality uh, at all, in all. Um, um, yeah, the influencers. I wanted to react on influencers. On one side, influencers, but most influencers which are famous are commercial influencers. So uh, they are often uh, even uh, uh, shaping more stereotype. If it's about beauty, um, you have to be slim, you have to be this way, you have to look that way. So are, this is often very, very much uh, uh, going in, uh, against the more gender equality. If it's political influencers or NGO, people from NGOs, or if they are fighting for a cause, uh, then influencers can, can play a, a, a good role. But here again, there is pro and, 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 and contrast in, in this, in this uh, domain. Okay, thanks for that. I, uh, just one, yeah. I, I deal a lot now with also uh, the Digital Single Market and Digital Market Act. We're working on, on that in, in, in many committees. And then there you kind of see also we had a lot of seminars in, in committees on artificial intelligence. And here you see the dangers that can exist and how people can be influenced and the power of algorithms. And here we have to be really, really, really careful because there's a lot of bias in all that. True. Marie. Yes, actually, I just wanted to ask the students now if there are some homeworks that they want to give to the MEPs on the topic, because, because now yeah. that we're coming to an end, the last 10 minutes, is yeah. there some yeah. student who really wants want to talk about the topic that the MEPs should think about? In the spirit of the conference on the future of Europe. <laughs> so whoever wants to take the floor now and say, okay, dear, uh, CFA, dear Mark, that's what we want you to take away, go ahead. Whoever is in the Zoom, raise your hand. We also do have two last trending questions. Go ahead, Peter. yep. Okay, I will share them in the meantime. So here we go. And the first one says, many of the initiatives suggested to empower women and reduce the gender gap, um, they are not successful. Why is this the case? And then there's another one also trending from Lisa from Athénée de Luxembourg. How can boys or men be educated not to look down on women for example, throwing looks at them, touching them without consent, or using vulgar language. Okay, let's take this question and put them on hold and uh, let the MEPs react on them in their conclusion. Uh, but let's see if we have uh, pupils formulating some, some homework in the, in the spirit of the Conference on the Future of Europe. For, for the MEPs, what should the MEPs take away from it? Are there any? Liceo Giordano Bruno, there's someone saying, I would love to speak about women empowerment. Uh, um, can we open up the mic for the Liceo or can you raise your hand tactically on, 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 on Zoom? So, and I see Iona also reacting. Uh, no, you no, you don't, not Iona. Okay, sorry. Okay, yeah, you too again, great. Okay, uh, the question was about the women empowerment and why such initiatives are not successful. I think that um, gender equality um, is a concerning topic for especially men, uh, because um, in the men type, um, <coughs> all of 
Okay, it's <laughs> can you hear us? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. But man, they have such an ideology of men, like a strong man, a strong that goes with uh, the female. And uh, the female empowerment says that um, women are equal to men and they can reach whatever they want. But um, in our ideology, um, there's the man that leads society. So if the men are, uh, if we um, put off all these ide ideologies, the man, um, a man could become angry because like, uh, if I'm not the strong man, if I do not have to rule the society, then who am I? So I think that that's the issue about uh, empower, uh, women empowerment initiatives. Uh, that is not about uh, the empowerment itself, but uh, about the uh, ideology that men have. So you would criticize that it's about the ideologies and that politicians should do more to change these ideologies. Yes, yes. So also last question maybe to the MEPs. What would you say? How could this be changed? What is the parliament especially doing? And we, let's rephrase. Philip, can you just show the questions again for uh, Sirpa and, and, and Mark that they can also take this aspect up in their answer? Yes. Should I put them up again? Yep, yep, yep. So that they. So the first two would take. Shall we read them once more? So I think for the first one, we can, on the basis of uh, what the Liceo Giordano said, we can maybe rephrase it. How can we change ideologies? As this is kind of the source for many people of why there is a gender gap. And for the second one, I think we can leave it as it is. How can we educate boys and men more? Okay, Sirpa, you want to start? Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, because I understand this concluding remarks, uh, a big, big thank you for this discussion. And I <clears throat> hope that you can reorganize this in the future too. Secondly, uh, uh, pressure us as legislators. And this is the question why they have been so unsuccessful because uh, women and equality needs legal protection, like we have a legal protection for property rights. We are just not trying to speak and educate and say, look, please, it's sort of a naughty thing to steal all the money from the bank or from the rich one uh, that is sanctioned and legally forbidden. So any kind of a discrimination should be sanctioned and legally forbidden. We would need to have the positive actions to, to empower women and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the other Jexis genders. And this is the positive discrimination or the empowerment, the diversity in workplaces, uh, in education and so forth. So we be full of these uh, tools. We would need to have a legally binding <clears throat> uh, gender impact analysis in legislation, in budgeting, we would need to have quotas, uh, uh, quotas uh, as a part of the diamond. Then I could go for very long. The question is, do we have the political will not only to say these are important, but to put this in force as the property rights are put in, in force? Then how to educate the, the boys? Well, this is actually going back to you and there's multiple way of education. As you said, your, your uh, 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 idols, uh, your, the media, the, the advertisement that is educating you, be there of that. Uh, educate your, your classmates, your friends and the others and your peers, because that is the point. You say what is okay, what is not okay. And then last but not least, this is something old school, uh, schools and teachers and of course homes should do but the, even though in case the school or the teacher or the home would be incapable or unwilling to do it we all can do our share thank you thank you so actually just as i had a small look on slido and it appears that many people 
to our last question, our last poll, who would you say has a main responsibility to support gender equality on first place is politicians. So, so you the MEPs, you know, who really thinks who also needs to do something against it. So last words is now Mark Angel, you can also react. So for politicians to be the main responsible, they need citizens pushing them. And therefore, I would say citizens should be uh, here in number one, because they have to put politicians to legislate. Uh, Sirpa said it, we need legally binding instruments. A lot of measures were just recommendations. For example, I give you one dossier, the pay transparency dossier to bridge the gender pay gap. There, it's in the treaties for four decades, five decades. It doesn't happen. Then in 2014, the com commission came up with recommendations. A few countries did something and it changed recommendations. And now finally we get a directive. We need legally binding uh, instruments and then we can, can move on with this. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, what I can say to that first question. Um, uh, the other question um, about ideologies, yeah, that's a difficult subject. The ideology word is often misused. For example, the people who are anti-LGBTI or anti-women's uh, right, they always talk about gender ideology or LGBTI ideology, and we respond. I always say, I am not an ideology. I am an identity. Uh, and and um, and, uh, mm -hmm. and hello, yes. And, yeah, we um, had an interference from somewhere, but anyway, go oh, on. Okay, okay, <laughs> and uh, and. Now, now I lost my, so I say I'm not you, an, you're an identity. I'm an identity, and it is, it's not a choice if, if you're a woman or a man. It's not a choice if you're gay and on, or straight. It's not a choice, uh, but those who are uh, anti-women, those who are transphobic, those who are homophobic, that is a clear choice. And this is uh, where we have to fight against these people who choose to be against one another, against the other one who is a bit different, the, the men who are against women, etc. So we... We really, um, there is a lot of work still to do, not only in the digital world, but also in the real world. And so we have kind of a double task. But please, okay. it's the citizens and the young people who have to push politicians in their member states to be active in this subject, because alone Europe cannot do anything, every, uh, cannot do it all. This business has to, has to be a common member states and the commission and the parliament and the council have a responsibility. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much to the both of you for, for also for Mr. Castello, who's already now gone for all your answers and your interventions. Um, we come to the end of this really interesting debate and I think we could have uh, talked much, much longer about this subject, which is so diverse and so important to all of us. So thanks again for everyone attending. Thank you for the schools, thank you for the students. Thank you for the MEPs. Thanks for the EPLOS also for the yes. liaison offices in Finland Thanks. and Italy for joining us in the organization of this event. Jonathan, I think you also want to say a last yeah. few words. Thanks so to you, thank Marie. you everyone from my side. Thanks to you, Marie. It was a, was a pleasure. Thanks to, uh, yeah, thanks to you. To, to, to our colleague, Bye -bye. Maria Tricconen from Finland, who co-organized that, to Chiara Landolfo from, from Italy, from our, from our colleagues. And thanks, big thank you, especially to, to the students, to the, the teachers who helped to, to bring the students back on board. And just to recap on what Mark Anger said at the end, it's up to the citizens now. It's a conference on the future of Europe push the uh, politicians uh, and uh, you know, defend your ideas that you expressed in a very inspiring way. And uh, we hope and we will organize such an event as, uh, again. It was a pleasure. See you soon. Stay healthy. Thanks a lot. Bye. Ciao.